If you want to improve your hamstring flexibility, I made this video for you. Having flexible hamstrings will obviously allow us to do the flashy things like touching our toes, doing the splits, or throwing high kicks if you're a martial artist like me. But even if you don't care about that stuff, it's still important for our day-to-day -day quality of life, especially if you're a relatively active person. Improving your hamstring flexibility will help reduce the risk of injury, improve our athletic performance, and can even help with things like back pain or bad posture. So in this video, I'm going to show you a simple superset that you can add into your lower body workout sessions to start unlocking more range in your hamstrings and strengthen that range. And just in case you don't know what a superset is, it's literally just two exercises done back to back as one set. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give you a quick tutorial on how to actually do the two exercises that we're combining for this superset. And then I'm going to complete a set with you so that you can follow along with me to get the hang of it. The first exercise is a single leg good morning. So this is a dynamic active hamstring stretch that will have us moving in and out of our end range for repetitions. Now this can be done with or without weight depending on your level of ability. I would probably suggest that you start out with just your body weight so that you can get the hang of the movement and then we can look to start loading it up to amplify the stretch, guide you deeper into the position and develop more strength through length. So we're gonna wanna set up in a split stance with our feet outside of the hips. Now, you can play around with your stance and find a position that's comfortable for you, but keep in mind that we do want to create some separation between the front and the back leg so that we can create a better line of tension through the upper hamstrings as we lower down. If we come in too close with our stance, we're going to feel it all in the lower hamstrings behind the knees, whereas if we can create some distance between our feet, you'll still feel it there, but we'll also be creating a better stretch through the upper hamstring as well so we can really hit the entire hamstring muscle from the pelvis down to the knee. Once we've found the stance that we're working from, we're just going to hinge at the hips and we wanna think about pushing our butt back as much as we can as we're lowering down. Now, a key note here is that we're only going down as far as we can keep our back nice and flat. So if you're losing that positioning, it means that you're going a bit too deep. Once we've found our end range, we're gonna hold that position for three to five seconds and then return back up. Now a soft bend in our rear knee is okay, but try to keep it as straight as possible as we're lowering down. And a quick pro tip for you is to make sure to firmly flex your quad on the front leg because that's going to help support the knee and promote greater relaxation through the hamstrings so that we can squeeze out a bit more range with this movement. When it comes to loading this exercise, you can use any form of free weight. So dumbbells, kettlebells, and barbells can all work well for this exercise. I would just recommend to start light and gradually build up the weight over time to progressively overload the stimulus as you get a bit more comfortable with it. The prescription for this exercise is going to be five to eight reps of three to five second holds in the stretch at the bottom of each rep. Once we've done that on both sides, we're immediately going to do eight to 12 reps of these single leg hip flexor lifts on each side. Now this exercise is pretty straightforward. To get set up in the position, we're going to be seated on the floor and we're just going to extend the working leg and keep our opposite leg tucked in nice and tight so that we can hug it and use it for some leverage. All we're doing from here is lifting the leg off the floor using our hip flexors, holding for three to five seconds each rep and then returning back down to the starting position. Now the most important aspect of this exercise is making sure to flex our quad to lock out the knee and pointing our toes as much as we can before lifting off. This is gonna help recruit maximal engagement from the rectus femoris, which is the main hip flexor muscle that we're working with this drill. So make sure to reset that intention before and after every single rep. And if you're really struggling to get a lift off from here, we can simply just lean back onto our hands to reduce the load on the hip flexors. And conversely, if you wanted to make this more challenging, we can give ourselves an object to lift our leg over and gradually use higher and higher objects over time. And if you really wanted to spice it up, we can also use ankle weights to overload the hip flexors even more. Using exercises like this to develop our straight leg hip flexor strength in our end ranges of hip flexion is going to build the strength on the closing side of the joint to facilitate moving us into larger ranges of hamstring flexibility. So now that we've gone over how to do both of the exercises, let's put them together into a superset. I'm gonna do the first set with you just to help show you how to do it, and then you can take it from there. But remember, work at your own level through your own range of motion. 
don't try to replicate exactly what you see me doing because I've been doing this for a long time. So we're gonna get started with five reps of our single leg good mornings on each leg, holding the stretch for five seconds at the bottom of every rep. So we're gonna start, find our stance, a comfortable stance for us to work from, and we're gonna drop down into our first rep. Make sure to push your butt back as you're hinging forward. We're only going as low as we can keep that back flat. Two, three, four, five. That's one. One, two, three, four, five, that's two. And we wanna make sure to extend our hips too at the top of every rep. Drop back down for the next one. Maximize that hamstring stretch. Two, three, four, five. That's three. One, two, three, four, five. That's four, last one here. Let's go. Find that end range first. One, two, three, four, Five, and now we're gonna switch sides, do the opposite leg. Remember to keep that quad flexed in the front leg. As you're lowering down, we're pushing that butt back. One, two, three, four, five. That's one. One, two, three, four, five. That's two. Down to the next one. Two, three, four, five, that's three. We've got two more. One, two, three, four, five. That's four. This is the last one here. Let's go for it. One, two, three, four, five. And so now we're going to drop down immediately into our seated single leg hip flexor lift. We're going to go for 10 reps holding the peak contraction for three seconds at the top of every rep. We're gonna do that for both sides, all right? So we're pulling our opposite leg in nice and tight. We're gonna hug that firmly. We're flexing the quads, we're pointing the toes. And rep number one, let's go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, that's three. One, two, three, that's four. One, two, three, that's five. Embrace the burn, your legs should be shaken by now. Three, that's six. One, two, three, that's seven. And try to keep your chest as upright as possible. And the next one, one, two, three, that is seven. Or eight, two, three, that's nine. And one, two, three, that's 10. And then we're gonna switch sides. Again, bring that opposite leg in nice and tight. And you can, again, come back on your hands if you need to, or if you're finding it a little bit challenging. But we're gonna flex the quads. We're pointing the toes up for number one, two, three, down. One, two, three, that's two. Remember to reset your quad contraction with every rep. Three, that's three. One, two, three, that's four. One, two, three, that's five. Let's embrace the burn here, guys. Two, three, that's six. One, two, three, that's seven. One, two, three, that's eight. We got two more. One, two, three, last one. Let's hold it for five. Come on, one, two, three, four, five, there we go. And then once you're done with that, we're gonna rest for approximately 90 seconds and repeat that superset for a total of three to five rounds, depending on how much volume that you want to put into it. After you're done with all of your sets, I always recommend to spend some time checking in on a larger expression of your hamstring flexibility, like a forward fold, for example, or the front splits, if you would like to achieve that goal. And I would say probably about 60 to 120 seconds is a good amount of time to be spending in these larger compound positions. That makes it a lot easier for us to track our progress and helps to give us an idea of how the work that we're putting into building these qualities is paying off in larger expressions of range of motion. One other thing that is worth talking about is where does this superset fit in amongst your other training? 
because one of the most common questions I get when I share these types of routines is, should I do this before my workout or after it? Now, don't get me wrong, you definitely can do something like this on its own as a separate routine if you would prefer to do it that way. But in my own training, I consider it to be part of the workout itself. I treat it as like accessory work to my main compound lifts. And generally speaking, I do my mobility work towards the end of my strength and conditioning sessions. But I still consider it to be part of the workout. And I bring the same intensity to these exercises as I would to a heavy squat or a heavy deadlift. Because when it's done right, mobility training is strength training just in specific muscles and specific ranges of motion. So hopefully you found this video helpful and you're able to use the stuff I've presented here to start making some range gains. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more flexibility content just like this. Peace.